so I just left the hospital uh, last night I showed you guys my uh, wristband you can't see it right now but just left the hospital came by here this morning then I'm gonna go to work uh, I'm actually going to uh, demolition ranch that's where I'm working at <laughs> so for those of you that don't know what I do outside of uh, being a competitive shooter is I am a general contractor okay I build barn dominiums okay they're not regular homes uh, I just can't and we <laughs> we can get into this some other time but conventional homes to me they leave a lot to be desired uh, so when I decided I was gonna be a home builder I decided I'm gonna build barn dominiums which is uh, a metal building home okay so anyway uh, I guess we can call barn dominium kind of like <laughs> the wildcat of, of homes right <laughs> or uh, an improvement but anyway the point is that's what I do uh, I own a, a business called Texas Bar Dominiums, and uh, that's what I do, that's my day job. So I'm very accuracy oriented and very precision oriented, as you guys know, and uh, it's it's a struggle because not everybody thinks the way I think. And uh, for example, you know, in, in construction, you know, if it's off a quarter inch, a lot of a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, well, depending on what it is, but be like, it's just a quarter inch, don't worry about it. Oh my God, it, I worry about it. You know, like it bothers me so bad, and I'm I'm just I'm just way too picky. Um, you know, for uh, for the <laughs> for the construction business. But uh, anyway, that's what I do, and I, I think a lot of it, the fact that I am that picky and that particular, is uh, a big part of my success in uh, in construction and in uh, you know in uh, in the precision world. So anyway. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I need to get back home because I annealed that brass and now I need to go prep it, okay? So, uh, I'll probably do that tonight. And uh, I have to go to the hospital one more time. And uh, tomorrow I'll let you know. I think tomorrow will be a good time. I just wanna make sure that everything goes well before I kinda tell everybody. But, uh, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you guys know next episode or two why why I've been going to the hospital but uh, anyway um, I'm not looking at the camera I'm looking at the road and I'm talking so don't don't panic all right so I went to work now I'm having to go back to the hospital and then I get to go home <laughs> uh, I noticed that the video already hit 3,000 likes that was crazy uh, you guys hit it out of the park so I guess you guys really want and a kneeling video don't you <laughs> so I'm gonna have to make time to do that this weekend all right so it's actually the next day I got home really late last night and I really didn't have time to do anything then of course today I had to go back to work let me get situated and I have to either go point some freedom seats or I need to prep some brass I need to go see what I have set up and also you guys hit Man, you guys today are like over 4,000 likes on that annealing video. So I guess, I guess you guys have earned it. <laughs> so I need to work on that as well. So anyway, uh, let me get all set up and I will see you in the reloading room. All right, so it's time to finally get some work done. Uh, I was looking at the 750 and uh, what I have set up is the pointer. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have to do first. I'm going to get all my seeds and uh, point them first. And of course, after I point them, then I need to uh, just change out the, uh, the plate and put the indexing spring back on, and then I can do the brass. I'm gonna work on that while I talk to you. How about that? <laughs> so some of the comments I've seen on that video that I did where I was annealing brass is, uh, a lot of you think that flame was too hot. Well, it's not. That's how I've been doing it for a long, long time and I've never had an issue. And uh, my stuff is very consistent. So, well, I should let it go. Anyway, let's uh, jog down and cycle. Let's throw this one away. We're gonna recalibrate just to make sure everything's good.
Okay. So, so as I was saying, uh, God dang it! <laughs> I pulled the whole thing out. All right, we're gonna get this. I'm probably gonna have to modify this thing so it doesn't come out. I mean, it's pretty snug in there. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, the uh, the flame. What I do is I dim the lights, and right when the when the flame wants to turn orange, uh, that's when I rotate the brass. But I will make a video to show you guys how to do that or how I do it. Uh, a lot of you asked also about different types of annealers. I don't know. I I bought this annealer that I have when the annealers first started coming out. That was a long time ago. But uh, they, uh, I bought that annealer and uh, that's the one I've used ever since. It's going on, I don't know, I'm gonna say 10 years probably, I don't know. But anyway, I know they make induction annealers now and all that good stuff, but I've just never tried them. I'm sure they work just fine and uh, probably if I was to buy an annealer now more than likely would be induction just because uh, obviously you can you can get more consistent than than with flame but I've never had a, an issue with flame so missed that one because I was talking <laughs> so anyway that's kind of where I'm at on the on the machines uh, another video I probably need to do is about barrel cleaning and I'm talking about how often you should clean it well I can tell you I clean every 75 to 100 rounds that's that's my preference but you know there's a uh, again I read the comments and there's a lot of people saying that you know they don't they don't anneal brass and they don't I'm sorry <laughs> they don't clean barrels and uh, you know they have 1700 rounds or whatever through their barrel never cleaned it and and I'm sorry in the comments I had to call BS on that but because he said he hadn't cleaned his barrel in about 1700 rounds and uh, <laughs> he said it, it it holds two and a half inch to four inches at a thousand yards with factory ammunition on a PRS rifle and guys that's what a good bench rest, uh rig or F-class rig would do you know with custom hand loads and uh, this guy was claiming he can do it with a with a dirty barrel out of a PRS rifle well you know what I mean so I'm sorry, I just had to call BS on that guy, but I mean, he may be right, and and that's kind of why I called BS on him. Maybe he can prove it, and you know, I'm willing to learn. Trust me. If I can get two and a half to uh, four inch groups at a thousand yards with factory ammunition, trust me, I'm all ears. But until then, I'm gonna have to call him on it because that's just unheard of. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said, I hope I hope he's right. I absolutely hope he's right, and that he's willing to share with me what he's doing because you know we're all here trying to learn, correct? Uh, I think the only difference is uh, I've just been at it longer, you know, and with purpose. That's the main thing that uh, I attribute to, uh, my success to is the fact that I've been doing this for a long time and I've been doing it with purpose. And when I say with purpose, I mean, I've been, I've been uh, experimenting and testing and, and always trying to come up with a better way to do something. And also I challenge, I challenge the common beliefs, right? Uh, and that's kind of how, how I got to where I'm at. Okay, I, I, was, I was getting the last three out of the box, so that's kind of why I fell out of rhythm. But, you know. The beauty about this thing is it just keeps going up and down. Okay, that's that, and I got one more. 
There it is. So I'm gonna go grab another box. Oh, and cycle. All right, I'm gonna go grab another box. Uh, I'm gonna put these back in this box. And uh, I'm gonna go grab another one, and we're gonna keep on going. All right, so I got another box. Of course, as you guys know, these are sorted by 1,000 base to tip. Uh, we're gonna get them into sorting later on. Because a lot of you have uh, expressed, uh, well, I don't want to call it concern, but you guys have asked questions about why I'm doing base to tip and not base to ojive. Well, I'm not never said I wasn't doing base to ojive, but like I said, um, we're gonna get into that later. But if you had to do only one thing, okay, I know you can't see me right now, but <laughs> pay attention. If you had to do only one thing, one measurement, it's base to tip, okay? Um, I know common belief is base to ojive, but if you only had to do one, do base to tip. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to look up some questions that you guys have in the comments. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to try to answer them. I'll be right back. So, I'm just here going through the comments and uh, pork chop poppies. <laughs> Remember, I asked you guys if you guys wanted me to include more personal stuff. Like I'm doing in this video, as a matter of fact. And uh, this guy said, don't make it a soap opera. We don't need to know your personal issues. We tune in to see your shooting stuff. I don't know why he's assuming that I'm, it's all issues, but you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, on the annealing issue, want to know how to do it without one of those programmable turntables, please. Well, I don't know, guys. I mean, see, I'm not, yeah, we're going to have to get into that some other time. Because I'm not about, this is how I do it, and it works, and you know, that's what I'm going to show you. I don't have an, an alternative as to how to do it without the tools that I already have. Like, um, you know, I'm sure others have, you know, probably can find somebody else on YouTube that can do that or can show you how to do it. I mean, I know you can do it with a, with a torch and a drill and all that good stuff, but I don't do it because I have the machine, right? This is, this is what I find funny, right? Um, I, I'm sharing what I do with you guys, right? Like, this is... Like, look, guys, this is what works, at least for me, okay? Forget everything you've heard. Forget everything you've learned from them or they or others, you know, because they say. Uh, forget all that, okay, when you're watching me, okay? I'm showing you what I do. I'm showing you what I do. I have went down that path of doing what they said to do, okay? It didn't work, okay? That's why there's so much frustration online. So this is an insight into what I do. And a lot of competitors have told me like, why are you showing this? Like, you're just creating competition for yourself, which as you guys know, I don't mind, right? But so this is, this is, this is like, yo, you're burning. <laughs> I like how you start with Y-O exclamation point. So I'm gonna read it. Yo, if the flame changes to orange like that, you're burning off a layer of brass. Really? Okay, less time in the heat. Now get back to slinging some mud. Okay, so I know this works. Okay, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so this is this is kind of what I expose myself to, right? By by doing these videos, people going, you don't know what you're doing. This is how you should do it. Uh, and of course, I'm not gonna listen because I know what works, right? But I'm just showing you guys. And so this is kind of, uh, and I know he means well. Okay, so I'm not I'm not. But I, you know, I just, I know he means well, but this is kind of what, uh, <laughs> what I, what I see. Um, but anyway, uh, let me see. My dad does the hot water method. I don't know how you anneal with hot water. I mean, you can't get water hot enough to, uh, to anneal. I mean, you need to anneal like at 750 degrees. You can't get water that hot. So I'm sure there's something that maybe I've heard of uh, salt bath. Uh, I've never done it. I've never even looked into it, so I don't know what, what that is. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Um, waiting for kneeling breast video. What else? Uh, let me find some others. Shop tours. Uh, Yeet 1775 said I need to do a shop tour. I think he's right. Uh, I need to kind of go through the machines and all the tools that I use. Here's another video that I need to do, like ASAP. And by ASAP, I mean after nationals. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I need to make a video about the absolute minimum amount of tools that you need to reload. I think that would be something that that would be very handy for for new reloaders because I remember when I started I bought a kit and my goodness there's so much stuff in there that you really don't need okay so I ended up having to buy things twice or three times just because what came with it is really not that great okay so I think it's more important to buy things specifically that you need okay for example the kits usually come with a beam scale uh it gets you by but if you're gonna do any amount of volume you're not gonna want to use a beam scale so i suggest you get a charge master 1500 or even the light uh, they work fine i mean they're gonna be better than the than the beam uh scale now we're not gonna get into accuracy because beam could potentially be more accurate probably can be they can be tuned for sure to be more accurate but they're just way too slow it, it's way too slow to the point that you're just not gonna want to do this okay so you're gonna you're gonna get better by going to the range more than you are by getting to the to the kernel accuracy on your scale okay that's that's just i don't know i don't care how you slice it that's how it happens okay that's how it works you're gonna get much much better by going to the range than you are by you know having a scale that weighs down to one kernel okay here's another question notice you had one can of propane and one map gas is there a reason for that because they burn different temperatures does it create an issue um and that was uh sir lance the reason for that is i had two map bottles okay but i needed to start my fire uh, my barbecue pit so i would use one of those bottles take it outside and start it right and i kept always using the same one so one of them ran out first okay so of course i'm annealing and it's like midnight kind of like it is now where i'm always doing stuff at night or very early in the morning and uh i need another bottle uh the, do i need another bottle no i could have done with one i just need to extend the time and that's why i dim the lights and right when it turns orange i get out of the way because i can do that with one bottle two bottles different bottles it doesn't matter right um so i had a uh, propane heater uh, that I use in my deer blind and guess what it had a propane bottle so boop, put it on there and rock and roll you know uh, so I'm just looking for heat okay that's so that's why I have two different bottles and I thought I thought about changing it for you guys before I did the video but I thought you know what they need to see what I do okay and part of part of reloading is problem solving that's a big part of reloading now that's not a big problem but uh <sighs> it's back to i don't want you guys to fall into the into the thinking everything matters so much to the point that you're going to totally ruin your reloads if you don't use the exact same uh, type of gas on your annealer heat is heat okay get it to the to the right temperature and it doesn't matter how you got it there okay that's why you can use you know uh, induction you can use fire you can use i guess that salt bath stuff i mean i don't know if it works but the point is heat is heat okay so that's why i have two different bottles so here's another one by bobby guns a kneeling brass for the poor man please i have two torches but i have never done it but if eric Cortina kneels his brass i guess i'm gonna have to do it too thanks for your time and videos um again i, I don't know any other way uh, when i started a kneeling it was man this video is getting long and i'm sorry guys but so when i started f class uh there was no annealers there was no there was no pointers the best thing we had was vod uh seeds uh and those were pretty new i mean i started in 2008 okay uh, so neck turners only the branchers guys were neck turning brass you know what i mean some of the f-class guys were starting to neck turn but nobody was annealing nobody nobody was pointing nobody was trimming nobody was doing any of that right i mean and the best scale that everybody had was the charge master 1500 i mean that's kind of that's kind of the the kind of taking you back to where i started and the record at nine i mean at a thousand yards the record back then was uh 199 15 it wasn't even a perfect score it was a 199 nowadays if 
you know, if it's calm condition and anybody, anybody shoots a 199, they're really upset. I mean, a, a clean is expected nowadays. You know what I mean? Back then, nobody was shooting clean. So that just kind of shows you in one decade how much the sport has advanced. And it's, it has advanced incredibly fast. I mean, to the point that, like I said, okay, so back then the record was 199.15 by Mike Downey. And he was my mentor, okay? He's the guy that took me under his wing and, and kind of uh, showed me the ropes. And now, Norm Harrell holds the record now, and it's a... T t so, okay, I'll tell you what the record is. It's 200, uh, 222 Xs. So, 199, that just means that inside... So, the F-class target is 1 MOA. That's the 10 ring. Inside the 10 ring, we have a uh, half MOA X ring, okay? So, 199.15, that just means he hit the 10 ring 19 times out of those 19 times 15 were inside of the half moa uh, x ring and one was outside the 10 ring that's how we got a 199 and uh funny story uh the first shot was the nine okay after that he cleaned and he shot amazingly well but the first one had been a nine so had he connected a 10 on the first on the first round he would have had a clean but uh the first clean you know at least in competition but uh and then norm harold he he shot a uh, 200 with 22 x's that means he took 22 shots and uh all 22 landed inside the half moa so how do you get uh 22 x's with a 200 well th the way the rule works is if you shoot a perfect score which would be a 200 with 20 x's then you can keep going Okay, so that's something you guys need to keep in mind, and you guys need to know this rule. If you shoot a perfect score, a 200 with 20 X's, you keep going until you hit a 10. Okay, so that's how Norm was able to get 22 X's. Okay, so uh, cool stuff, you know what I mean? And the, the sport has advanced tremendously. And, of course, back then, everybody was shooting 6.5, 284. So that, was, that was the cartridge to shoot. And uh, now everybody's shooting 284s. <laughs> or, you know, some guys are shooting Magnum. Some guys are shooting uh, WSMs. A few guys. Uh, some are shooting uh, 7 millimeter Magnums. Uh, R-SOMs and, and various. But, you know, the majority, at least in the United States, the majority are shooting 284 Winchesters or Shehanes or a variant of uh, 284. Because that just, I mean, it's, it is the absolute best bang for your buck ballistically okay uh so anyway that's that so anyway this video has ran very long and i'm sorry about that so i'm gonna have to cut it short here a lot of you have not subscribed I, i'm gonna show you the analytics next time you know i'll probably put them right here on the screen how about that I'll check out the analytics okay a lot of you are not subscribed to the channel so just click this target right here it'll subscribe you it's real simple and then uh we'll go from there anyway I will see you guys next time. I hope all your groups are one whole. See ya.